review, we start with learning target 7, and so you had to identify angle pairs. Here we're looking at AOF and AOB. So AOF would be this one right here, and then AOB is this one up here. Notice that these two angles, they don't line up to be a straight line, so they're not supplementary. They also don't add up to be 90, and so they're not complementary. The only thing we can really say about these is that they're right next to each other. They share a ray, and so that makes them adjacent. EOD, this one right here, and AOB is this one up here. You can see that these are opposite angles of each other, and so these are vertical angles. AOB is this one up here, and COB is this one down here. Uh, now remember, you can't assume that an angle is 90 degrees unless you have this little symbol here, which we do. And so we can know for sure that these two angles add up to 90 degrees, which makes them complementary. DOF be this one right here, and then AOF is this one right here. Well, these two angles do make up a straight line. AD. And since they make up a straight line, uh, not only are they supplementary, you can see I almost made that mistake here, uh, they are a linear pair. So if you put supplementary, you probably got four because that's not the, the most specific thing that you could write. The most specific thing you could write when they do make a straight line like that is linear pair. All right, back to some more algebra. Here we know that these are supplementary, and so that means if we add them together, 4x plus 65 plus 3x plus 73, it should equal 180 degrees. Well, again, uh, we've got a similar situation. We've, we've seen this before. We add our like terms together. We get 7x, 65 plus 73 is 138. Now i got this little two-step equation, so I subtract 138 from both sides, then I divide by 7, and I get x equals 6. I do need to solve for the measure of angle ABC, which is this one right here. So 4x plus 65. Uh, well, if x equals 6, you got 4 times 6, 24, plus the 65 is 89. During the group test, many of you noticed, that doesn't look like a 89 degree angle. And, well, that's true. Um, but know that things are not drawn to scale uh, very often in this class, so don't be uh, looking at that to make any type of judgment. For part B, uh, here, again, we don't know yet that these are complementary, that they're 90, but they look like it. We look down here and we see that this is, in fact, 90 degrees, and so straight line minus 90 means that these have to be 90. So we do know that they are complementary. We're going to combine these two things, x plus 9 plus 8x. Uh, we'll say that this equals 90. Combine our like terms gives us 9x plus 9. Subtract the 9, divide by 9, we get x equals 9. Well, uh, again, we want to find the measure of angle ABC, and so we, uh, we go ahead and plug that in. 9 plus 9 is 18. All right, uh, your construction. So a, a good student would probably realize, all right, if we did four of these in class, we've got two on the group test, means we'll probably have the other two on the individual test. So um, not promising anything, just saying you might want to make sure that you practice the other ones. Either way, uh, here, you know, especially with uh, constructions, you need to make sure that you have the marks on there. That's what proves to me that you did the actual construction. So just drawing uh, a congruent segment is not enough. You need to kind of have this long section, then this arc here that shows you measured this distance, and it's equal to that. Again, down here, you need to draw that arc all the way through. Uh, which will make this segment equal to that segment. And then from each of these points, uh, you'll open up your compass to make that arc here. Keep the same distance, put the pointy edge here, open it up, and, or I guess keep it the same, and then make this arc here. And then you're going to go through that intersection from the vertex right here. All right, uh, final section. Uh, depending on which class you're in, you, you got uh, maybe a version of all of these. Uh, here you are <clears throat> given a couple of endpoints uh, for the first one, and so you need to find the midpoint. So you're just going to straight up use that formula. Find the average of the x's, 7 plus negative 9, and then the average of the y's, negative 5 plus negative 3. Uh, so add them up, divide by 2, and you got negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. And then negative 8 divided by 2, which is negative 4. So your final answer here for midpoint is negative 1, negative 4. Uh, for this one, You've got, uh, you, you've been told, you've got 0.29 and the midpoint is 4, negative 5. You need to find that other 
endpoint. So you're going to set this up. You've been given one x, and you need to find the other x. You divide by 2, because, well, that's part of the formula. And you know the midpoint value for x, and that's 4. So you set it equal to 4. Same thing over here. You've been given the 9. You want to find the other one. You've got to equal the negative 5. Well, you do your, your simple algebra here. You multiply by 2. You subtract the 2, and you get x sub 2 equals 6. That's the x value of the other endpoint. Here again, you multiply by 2, subtract 9, and you get y sub 2, your other y value for the other endpoint, you get negative 19. All right, here, using the distance formula, you've got the point 1, 5, and negative 3, negative 1. So remember that you're subtracting the x's and subtracting the y's. So you've got 5 minus negative 1, and then 1 minus negative 3. If you set it up like this, uh, you got to add, <clears throat> and that gave you 6 squared and 4 squared. You didn't have any negative numbers, but you do know that when you square a negative number, it's supposed to become a positive. And so we have positive 36 and positive 16. That everybody should have. Add those together, you get 52. Take the square root of 52. For right now, you can just do that on your calculator, and you get about 7.2. Over here, you had uh, just another version of the same thing, except you didn't have a graph to, to work with. Again, subtracting the x's, subtracting the y's, you wind up with 4 and 2, or negatives depending on how you did it. But either way, when you square them, you should, and everybody should, wind up with 16 and 4. Add those together, you get 20. Again, square root right now, decimals are okay, you get 4.5. All right, for the process standards question, you've got Cade walking from the park here at 15.25 to his school, 15.5, and then uh, from here to his home at 35. So the real question is, how many miles could he have saved by walking this diagonal instead of walking uh, this, this L? So in my mind, the reasoning pops up in three areas. You've got, first, you've got to find the long distance. So you know, even though we could probably do this in our head, in order to communicate clearly, let's go ahead and write it out. So the, the trip going south is 25 minus 5, or 20 miles. And the trip going east is 30 minus 15, uh, which is 15. So add these two things together, and you got the total trip of 35 miles. Well, the shorter distance is diagonal, so we're going to need to use our distance formula. And so we go ahead and do that using P and H, and you wind up with 25. But of course, the question isn't how far is the diagonal. The question is, how much distance would he have saved? So I'm going to subtract the 25 from 35, and I get 10. So Cade would have saved 10 miles if he took the diagonal. All right, that's it. Hopefully this helps, and uh, be ready for your test.